<sighs> Hello again, party people. It's been a while. Um, so welcome back to my channel. My name is Arena. If you're new here, welcome. Uh, I'm glad to have you here. Um, so today's video is not gonna be a vlog. Switch o change o. Um, I'm a big vlog fan, but not today because I have some fun information to share with you people because I like to share my hacks and tips and tricks. Um, so I didn't share this on YouTube, but if you follow my Instagram, you know that I had something called a pick line, a P-I-C-C -C line, um, in my arm for about a month. Um, and a pick line is what's called a central line. Um, so it's basically a little catheter or like a tube that goes from your arm and it goes all the way into your heart. Um, which is kind of freaky, um, but it helps you get medications and infusions for repeated long-term stuff um so that's why i had it um but if you're watching this video you are probably getting a pick line or somebody you know is getting a pick line and you want to help out you want to learn about it um i am here to share with you the tricks and stuff that i learned about my pick line and hopefully that will help you or your friend um have an easier time with it chronologically kind of like getting it placed having it getting it removed all of that kind of stuff um, so first up we're gonna start with kind of like stuff that you want to do before you get a pick line to have ready for when you get it be like buying different products that you might need to help take care of it um, like pick line sleeves um, a water cover to take showers with um, different kinds of tape and stuff um, that you might need um, and also, like probably the trickiest part about having a pick line, like the most annoying part about it was dealing with all of the like medical like offices and like calling a hundred different numbers and like being on hold for four hours. Um, so go ahead and get all of that out of the way as soon as you can. I will later in the video go over all the different products and why you'd use them, but if you decide which ones you want, go ahead and get those before you get the pick line placed so that they're ready for you and you're not like scrambling while you have a pick line and you don't have the stuff for it because that is stressful and that's what I did. Don't recommend. <laughs> okay, so back to the phone numbers thing and calling people. Um, I hated that because <laughs> I always felt super annoying when I was calling people a hundred different times, like 10 minutes apart, um, but don't feel bad. They are there to help you and you just need to get your stuff done, get it all situated because if it's not set up for you and ready to go, it's going to be very stressful. Um, when I got mine placed, I didn't have like supplies or a nurse or anything for like a week <laughs> and it was the most stressful week of my life. Um, so make sure that you have that all set up. You'll need a home health company to get your supplies a nursing company to have a nurse come help you with your pick line because if you're like me you know nothing about pick lines when you get one um, <laughs> and then calling the doctor's office that ordered it calling the doctor's office that's gonna place it all of that kind of stuff go ahead and get that done ASCP that's gonna help you a lot when you figure out which home health company and nursing company and all of that you're going to use um, go ahead and write down the name of the company, the number of the company, who you spoke to um, because sometimes you'll need to call them back for other things later and if you forget who your company is, that's going to be a little bit difficult. <laughs> I also did that. I literally made so many mistakes going into this so I, I know exactly what not to do and I'm going to tell you how to do it right. <laughs> um, so definitely write down who you're using for what things, who you talk to, and that'll just make it easier to like go back and look and see like, oh, like I need a nurse to come. I don't remember what my nursing company is. Just look, find it. There you go, all good. You can call them and it's so much nicer. Um, <laughs> so now that you're all set up, ready to go, you're gonna want to get something to organize all the supplies. Um, I'll show you in just a second, but I got, Oh, <laughs> I'm so winded. Okay. 
I got a, um, I didn't buy this, I already had it, but I had these like plastic drawers um, and I painted them just to make them all cute and not as medical looking. Um, <laughs> so I know a lot of people use these three tiered carts from Target. Those will also work. Um, my drawers are a little bit big, um, so you probably don't need that much room depending on what is all going in your pick line. Um, but yeah, try to guesstimate how much room you're going to need and when in doubt, just go bigger because it's always good to have extra room. But definitely have kind of an organization system set up before you get supplies sent to you. Um, it'll just make it easier when you need to like flush your line and do all of that stuff just to know where everything is and to keep everything clean and sterile and all of that. So now we're gonna go into the actual placement of the pick line, day of what you're gonna do. Um, so before you leave your house, uh, I recommend probably putting a couple ice packs in the freezer, um, just like soft, flexible ones. Um, not like straight up ice because that's kind of hard and crunchy um but just have those in the freezer already before you leave just so it's already there when you get back um but you actually can drive yourself to a pick line placement um there's no like systematic sedation that goes on um at least for what i had make sure to ask your doctor who's placing it because sometimes they put you under light sedation in that case you can't drive some people do it under general. Um, generally though, you're not gonna be sedated because it's super easy. Um, so when you get there, this is what's gonna happen. Um, they're gonna call you back. Um, you'll check in, do all of that stuff. Um, they'll call you back and then, I just had a nurse place mine who's like a pick line nurse. I didn't have to get into a gown or anything. I just wore a t-shirt. Um, you lay down on the bed and then he puts this blue sheet over you and then the sheet has like an empty square, like a hole in it. And that square goes over this part of your arm. Um, and that blue sheet is what's called a sterile field and it'll keep everything nice and clean so you don't get any infections or gross stuff getting into your line while it's placed. Um, pick lines are a sterile procedure and they are a central line, so they need to be kept super clean right from the get-go, um, <laughs> but it's not as scary as it sounds. Um, yeah, so they'll dress you in a sterile field, and then basically they'll just put some lidocaine in your arm, which is a local anesthetic, which means that your arm is just gonna fall asleep, you won't be able to feel it, um, and then that takes like two seconds. It's like a pressure pinch. If you've ever gotten an IV in your hand or your arm, it's about the same super easy um, and then you can't feel it which is super weird um, and then what they're gonna do is they're gonna take a super long purple tube and they're going to thread it through your arm into a vein and that vein goes into your heart okay so some people say that they can kind of feel like a tingling sensation but nobody I've ever heard of has said that it's painful um, so it shouldn't be painful you shouldn't really feel anything it's super easy I really didn't even know it was in when he said it was in, I was like, wait, you're done? And he was like, yeah. And I was like, cool, sick. Um, <laughs> so once they have it in your heart, they're gonna check the placement by taking like a big plastic thing and putting it over your chest. Um, and then they will put some like heart monitor leads on your body and they'll just check the rhythm of your heart so they can see where the end of the line is and it's not too far in your heart because then it'll kind of tickle your heart and give you some weird feelings. Um, but if that's the case, they'll just pull back out a little bit, no big deal. Um, and so then you have a pick line in. And then last thing they're going to do is either going to use a stat lock, which is like a sticker with clips on it, and that'll like stick to your arm and they'll clip the line in so it doesn't move around. Or they will just stitch it into your arm, which again, super easy. Just feels like a little needle pinch, it's nothing crazy. I wasn't, I didn't have mine stitched in, so. I don't know if your arm is still numb in that area. It probably is, probably won't feel it. Um, <laughs> I would definitely ask somebody else though who had it stitched, if you're getting your stitch. Um, but on that note, if you are allergic to lots of adhesives, I would probably recommend asking it to be stitched in so that you don't have to have that adhesive stat lock on your arm all the time, because that could give you a rash and not be super fun. Um, so in that case, stitches are Good if you have allergies to adhesives. Yep, so they've placed it, they've locked it in, and then they're just gonna flush it with saline. Um, it just means they like wipe the end with alcohol, alcohol, <laughs> and then they push some saline through it, and then they lock off the line with a little like 
locker stopper. I'll put a picture here. They just pinch it and it locks it and stuff like can't move back and forth through it. Blood won't be able to get back into your line and clot up because that could be a big issue um, if that happens. Um, but the saline gets locked in there and keeps it all clean and ready to go for when you need to use it. Some hospitals will use a heparin lock. Um, I think it's probably like 50-50 whether they use heparin or not. Um, there's some studies that say that heparin's not like really that effective, but it is a blood thinner and they put it just in the line, just enough to get through the line. It's not really throughout your whole body. Um, and that sits in your line and gets locked in there. And in case any blood were to kind of creep its way back into your line, it'll stay thin. It won't clot up in your line. Because again, that would not be super great. Then you are done with your pick line placement. Um, the lidocaine for me wore off within about 20 minutes. And then for about four days, I would say my arm was pretty sore. Um, kind of felt like it was bruised, but um, it's nothing like super horrible. <laughs> um, again, you put those ice packs in your freezer before you left, you get home, put a little ice pack on it, chill out, watch Netflix for a day. You'll be great. Um, honestly, I was still up and about running around after I got it placed, so you can definitely do that. Um, again, super easy procedure. It's not really supposed to like wipe you totally out. If you feel like something's wrong with it, just go ahead and call your doctor, call your nurse. Um, there's no harm in that, um, but yeah, it should be pretty easy. So hopefully this helps you feel a little bit better if you're getting your pick line placed. It can be really scary and daunting. Okay, so now you have your pick line in and now you get to take care of it. I would have a nurse show you how they do it before you do it yourself. Um, just so make sure you keep it sterile, um, keep it clean so you don't get any infections because that would not be good. Okay, this is a swab cap and this is what's gonna go on the end of your line to keep it clean. Um, I will show you with the end of this extension. Um, so when it's open, you'll also have like a little end, like a rubber end on it. I don't have one right now. Um, but what you'll do is this will be clean, your hands will be clean, and this just has a little sponge in it with alcohol. Let's see that focus. Hello. Yeah, so it's just got a little alcohol sponge in it, and you just put that on the end of your line, screw it on like that, and then you just leave it, and that will keep it clean and protected while you're not using your line. And then weekly, you're gonna wanna have the dressing on your pick line changed. Um, so that is gonna be like that little plastic stuff they put over it. Sometimes there's a little thing called a bio patch, which looks like a circle sponge that kind of goes around. And then if you have a stat lock instead of stitches, the stat lock will also be changed out. This is what a stat lock looks like. Um, it comes, it's sterile because again, your line is sterile. Um, but it's basically a sticker and you peel the back off like this. It sticks to your arm, usually up here, but I have a jacket on. Um, and then these little wings will clip into the little holes on your pick line like that. And then your pick line will be kind of set right in there and it just keeps it nice and in place. So your nurse generally is gonna do your pick line dressing change because it is nearly impossible to do it yourself because you only have one arm. And this is what a dressing change kit looks like. Um, and so the nurse is gonna come, open it up, set up the sterile field, and she's going to take off the old dressing, just kind of peel it off, and then she's going to take the bio patch off. Sometimes a bio patch is like a clear square that goes on top. She's gonna take that off, and then she's gonna take your stat lock off if you have that. Um, and then what she's gonna do is take it kind of looks like a wand, like a stick with a little round sponge on the end. She clicks it and like a, I don't know what's in it, chlorhexidine I think? Some kind of like antibacterial sterile cleanser, like heavy duty cleanser. Um, and she's just going to rub the area with it a few times in circles and just make sure it's super clean. She'll get a new bio patch, put that around or on top depending on what kind you have a new stat lock to keep it in place, um, have leeway to go in and out and it's still gonna be safe to use. Um, so she has to kind of accidentally pull it out a lot for it to be like really bad. Um, so a little bit of wiggle while she's changing it, super fine. Um, I wouldn't stress about that. Put the dressing back over everything to keep it nice and clean. And here's where my favorite hack comes in. Um, so when you're doing the dressing change, um, I would ask your nurse if she would 
do is this little thing that I like to do. Um, so obviously you won't be using tape, you'll be using a tegaderm um, or whatever dressing you're using, but I'll just show you how I asked to have things taped. I also used this method when I was just taping my line like up in different places on myself just to keep it up and away. Um, yeah, so you'll have your line kind of stuck on you, right? But instead of just taping it flat like this, where it kind of pulls and it starts pulling off, what you're going to do is have them give you a little leeway. I don't know if you can really see it, but you're going to pinch it. Can you see that? Pinch it around the line like that, and then tape that onto your arm. So then you've got this extra room, and it's not going to tug off. So, I hope that helps. <laughs> Last section, daily hacks on having a pick line. So first up is showers. If you're getting a pick line, you're gonna know, don't get it wet. So how do you take a shower if you're not supposed to get the whole arm wet? Here's the hack, get a shower sleeve. Your home health company will probably send you some that are just like little glove looking things. Um, I don't particularly love those shower covers that my home health company gave me. I've never opened it, but it's literally just like a glove that's made out of plastic. But we'll pull it out for you. It is massive. This is my whole arm. Here's the little pinkies. Um, and then it looks like it has like a little tourniquet thing on the end to keep it sealed. Um, if you want to go ahead and use these and not spend your own money, go for it. Personally, I don't know if I would trust this to keep water out of a shower because homegirl takes long showers. <laughs> so there's a couple different companies that make waterproof pick line sleeves. I used one that was called the Dry Pro and it was supposed to be like completely waterproof like you were theoretically supposed to be able to swim with it. So if you're interested in that, um, I'll have that linked below. Um, in my case, my arm was like in between sizes, so it was either like completely cutting off my circulation or like wouldn't seal quite right. Um, it still worked for like showers because I didn't like completely submerge it, but make sure that you have a good fit with those so you're not having like leaking or like your whole hand isn't turning purple. <laughs> um, but I did really like the Dry Pro and the fact that you theoretically could swim with it if it had been the right size for me. Um, <laughs> Um, the other ones are, I think are Mighty Well and Karen Wear. Um, there's probably some other ones too, but those are kind of the ones that I see most people use. Um, and I'll have those linked also. I don't have any experience with those particular ones, but I hear a lot of people like them. So pick and choose what you think you might like. But you can get these from Etsy and they're basically like just a short little sleeve that goes over your arm. And you can just kind of tuck your line into it and keep it all put away and then it won't get caught on stuff and accidentally pull or anything because um, that could be bad <laughs> um, and they can be cute too you can match with your outfit or you can get ones that are like your skin tone all that kind of stuff um, I got mine off of Etsy I'll link that below um, and you can get them in so many different places too so if you don't like these find some other ones or I've also seen people make them out of old socks um, <laughs> you just cut the foot off and boom, you got a pick line cover. Um, my home health company also sent me these like classic netted ones that you just see everywhere. I just didn't see the point. <laughs> I was like, there's holes in it. What's the point? It's like, does nothing. This is one of the sleeves that the home health company gives me, which I think is kind of goofy because it just has these holes in it. Anyways, so if you have an extension on it, it might be kind of confusing how you're supposed to put the whole line in the pick line sleeve if it's that long. Um, so what I did is I would take the whole extension and wrap it around my arm and then tuck it into itself. Um, and then it was just kind of like wrapped around my arm and kind of put away like that. And then I'd put the sleeve over it and then it was all put away nice and neat. And I would also recommend these little clips. They're called tubey clips. So um, it's basically a clip with a little um, piece of fabric on the end that like can wrap around something and hold it. Um, so what I would do is I had my line run down my shirt and come out. I don't know if you can see this. It would come out the bottom. 
<laughs> of my shirt and then I would loop it and then I would clip it into the to be clip um, and then you can clip it to your shirt or sometimes if I just really didn't want it out and I just didn't want people to know that I had it um, I would actually stuff the coil into my pocket um, and then all you have is that like little extra line that comes out and into your backpack um, so it's pretty discreet you could also um, coil it up a little higher and keep the coil in your shirt and then clip the inside like in your shirt like that then people won't see the extra tubing. So if you want to convert a backpack into an infusion backpack, it's pretty simple. Um, you can take a grommet, which is like a metal ring. I'll show you. It's this little thing. And you get cut out, my battery's about to die. Anyways, hammer this into the side of your backpack so the tubing can come out of it. You want a bigger one so it can actually go through. Um, and then you can put a hook at the top of your backpack to like hang anything that needs to stay upright and then just put everything in there and you're done. Okay, my last and final piece of advice would be to join Facebook groups. They are super helpful. Um, one was just like answering questions you have day to day, um, like how to do something, what's something called. Um, if you start having like an issue and you're not sure if it's like actually an issue or not, you can ask through there. Um, again, if you are like actually concerned about something, go ahead and call your nurse or your doctor. Better safe than sorry. Um, Facebook can't give you medical advice, just so you know. Um, but yeah, it helps you kind of feel less alone with a pick line because there's so many other people who have them. There are literally tons of people who get pick lines. Um, so. Don't stress too much. Join a Facebook group. I love them. Okay, my battery's about to die. Thank you for watching. I hope this helps you. Um, I am also going to come out with a port hacks and stuff. Once I have that, I'm getting that tomorrow. Uh, stressed. Um, so if you want that, you can go ahead and subscribe. Um, I also just kind of travel a lot and do life with chronic illness. So if you just want to see that, go ahead and subscribe. And if this video helped you at all, I hope it did, um, go ahead and give it a like so more people can see it if they need it. Um, all the love. I hope y'all are doing well. And thank you for watching. Bye.